Welcome to The One Who Seeks, where you are the one who seeks. My name is Tara. I am your intuitive tarot reader. I use tarot as a tool to open up the channels of your intuition. By tapping into your unawakened subconscious, you will answer the questions that you seek. I am not a psychic, although it may seem like it sometimes. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Always remember, the freedom of choice is your power. Only you can make it happen with your actions. What are you seeking? everyone welcome to the one who seeks where you are the one who seeks I have a special reading I'm going to do today um, so my dog karma just passed away on 515 2024 due to heart complications um, she probably had some underlining other issues going on she was 12 and a half years old um, spent 11 and a half years with me and scuba her husband my black and white dog and so I got um, these tarot cards, they just came in today. I've been waiting for them. Uh, so I got the dog tarot and I got the mushroom deck because she would eat mushrooms a lot. Uh, we do live up in the mountains. She has free range to uh, do whatever she wants. And um, she liked to eat everything and she got a hold of mushrooms quite often and would get fucked up and amongst other things and lots of uh, vet trips for her getting her stomach pumped and getting her checked out to see what's going on and all that fun stuff. So, um, we're going to do a reading today and call her in. Okay, I'm going to do um, the head, heart, and spirit spread. Three card spread. And um, at this time, I would like to take a few breaths. for karma. Ooh. Ah, did you see that extra little spark that came out there? Uh, karma did have a lot of energy, had a lot of spark. She was always go, go, go. <laughs> She was an orange and white dog. <sighs> okay, right now I would like to call in our angels, spirits, source, self, karma, Archangel Michael, Raphael, My 
grandmother who is guardian of karma now up in the heavens please be here with us only loving energies are allowed any other energies if Thank you for your service, and I ask for leave politely. All other animal spirits of loving nature, loved ones who have passed of loving nature, to be here with us for our guided reading today for the collective. Thank you for being here with us. Let me be a clear and open channel for the messages coming in today. For our head, heart, and spirit spread. Namaste. Okay, so. Um, I would just like to get started with saying that um, karma is a Scorpio. Um, so this, I did adopt her through a shelter. So um, I don't know her exact birth date, but her approximate birth date and the date I've used in the last 11 and a half years that she's been with me. She has been a Scorpio, um, born October 31st, 2011. She did have a marking on her back that kind of resembled a jack-o'-lantern. Um, and she is an originate white dog, so I chose Halloween to be her birthday because of that and you know, it's easier to remember of course because it is already a holiday and I do love Halloween I love dressing up um so I am just gonna kind of read the, the Scorpio meaning here for karma um her archetype was detective, investigator, therapist, and transformer. She definitely was my therapist. She was my my love, my life. The one who was there for me anytime I didn't feel good, uh, I was crying or I was sick. She is an investigator of all things, investigating all of her surroundings and detecting it. Um, transformer, because she did take a lot of mushrooms. She did transform. Uh, primary, primary motivation to live life with intensity and to be willing to face deep feelings honestly. Her strengths, desire for truth, inability to ignore feelings, getting to the heart of the issue, which was playing ball for her, going to the beach, playing in the water, playing in the lakes and the rivers, exploring nature. Uh, positive expression, accepting the reality of intense or hidden emotions, knowing layers of self. She definitely was herself. Um, negative expression, being controlled by unconscious emotional patterns or hiding truth from self or others. Obsession or addictions. She did have her addictions. Playing ball, eating mushrooms, eating anything that she could find that she found suitable to eat. <sighs> um, Scorpio is ruled by the planet Pluto, which is associated with judgment, which is her resurrection, and Mars, which is death. Um, 13, which is four foundations, and 20 for judgment was two, unity, and uh, zero, which is divinely guided, guided by God, source. Uh, her quality is water, fixed water, so emotions, 
stability, feminine energy. Okay. And she did die in um, Taurus season on March. Is it March? We're in May. <laughs> I don't know why March came out. Uh, maybe she is marching uh, across the, the bridge, the Rainbow Bridge. So she did die May 15th, 2024. Um, which is Venus. The Empress Energy 3. Uh, having harmony. Music, musician, peacemaker, earth spirit, and builder. Okay. So, before I start doing this reading, I did spray my sprays here. Um, so, a grounding spray for digging in the dirt. A protection spray for protection as her spirit. Pure love. My sprayer doesn't work, so I rubbed it on my wrist, on my heart, and my third eye. And for let letting go. Let go. Letting her go. Okay. So I <clears throat> wanted to draw a couple of chakras and uh, spirits, elements. All right, so right now our element is earth. And we have icy. get ahead into this um, do you want to knock out any old energy bad energy and these are new decks they are pre-shuffled um, this over here okay so let's get started what does karma want the collective to know about head, heart, and spirit. So I did pick this spread because she is in my head and uh, I keep reeling the day that I, she died of uh, what happened and, you know, things I could have done differently, um, what, it, what did happen, the images that go through my mind, um, being able to see the signs and you know, I didn't really see any signs with her. Um, there were subtle signs, but she was such a hard, strong-willed dog. She just kept going. It didn't, it didn't matter what she did. It, she never showed signs of weakness or sickness. Uh, she just kept going. And um, she, she ran strong to the very end. And in the end, her heart is I think what ultimately took her. Um, so in showing me the graph of her heart sign where you normally would see your heartbeat kind of like this, and it's strong up and down, and then there's some little ones and they're strong points. Um, hers look like this. Okay, and it was basically flat lined, but it had some little curves in it. There were no points at all. It was very monotoned, all on one line. Uh, did not go up and down. Her heart beating uh, beat was so fast. So fast for at least three hours, maybe a little bit more. Um, she woke up at 2.20 in the morning, threw up, and um, normally she would eat it 
right away if she threw up and she did not try to eat this and she basically almost laid down in it. Um, some weird white stuff in there. She had lots of food in her belly though. She had a great last meal, home cooked, uh, boiled chicken with the skin, turmeric rice, peas and carrots, and uh, some apples. So she did have a great last meal. She loved to eat. She loved eating everything. Um, uh, and I think her heart just basically gave out. She basically had a heart attack in the end. Uh, and the vet did not know what to do. Um, she said that she had never seen that particular heart rhythm in any dogs that she's ever seen with heart problems and did not know where to start um, to do a bunch of tests to, you know, maybe save her life. But um, in the end, I had to make the decision to let her go. I was with her the whole time, loving her, laying on the floor with her. And I think she was ready to go. Oh. So let's get into it. All right, what do we need to know about our, our head? What's going on in our heads right now? Okay, we have three of leashes. This is about creativity. And um, I don't really know what the leashes represent here in this deck as far as, you know, wands, swords, cups, pentacles. Um, I'm gonna say that's probably closer to wands. It's very fast movement. Uh, holy shit, and this leash actually, that these leashes on here look very similar to the leashes that um, my elopement photographer, Unleashed Elopements, um, she had sent us two leashes for Karma and Scuba for our wedding day um, as a gift. And that looks almost exactly like the one she got us. Um, it looks like we do have some mountains here and the starry sky. Um, and I was trying to do her thumbnail, Karma's thumbnail, for this video right before this. So I was channeling her in through there. Um, I was trying to put a background of a starry sky with mountains. And here it is. I ended up choosing um, our waterfall and bridge picture, which you have already seen at the beginning of this video but this is what I was channeling. All right. Um, I'm actually gonna read from the book here. Three of Leashes. It's a stiff book, okay. So, uh, we are gonna have to figure out which one it is. Leashes, bowls. <laughs> So we have bowls as well, leashes. Um, okay, so it looks like they're just doing a general. They're not actually going through each one. Okay, so we do have the leashes. Okay. Interesting. So we don't actually have all the numbers. So it looks like they only have one of leashes, three of leashes, and seven of leashes in the book. Interesting. Okay, that explains why the deck feels so thin um, compared to the other one here. The three of leashes suggests that you are being focused, fair, and effective in your approach to balancing your relationship with your dog. The card also serves as an affirmation that equilibrium is best achieved through praise and re reward rather than manipulation and fear, and that you already understand this principle very well. Okay. So praise and re reward rather than manipulation and fear. 
Okay, and maybe um, that's not something you need to do for yourself, right? Praise yourself and reward yourself instead of um, being based off of fear. Okay. And this is uh, the heart. What do we need to know about our heart? The beating of our heart and how fast it's going. I definitely need to be doing some grounding. So we have earth here and you see. Seven of bones. This is uh, about spirit. Seven is spirit and bones. Obviously, she loved to eat everything. She would have loved these bones, except for I didn't really give these raw hides to her because she got diarrhea. If she would eat them, she would eat them too fast. So she didn't really ever get too many of those. Okay, and seven of bones. Okay, seven of bones ask you to view your situation through the qualities of fidelity. Interesting. So that stands out to me because I actually have fidelity investments. And um, right now the economy seems to be going quite bad. Um and I'm trying to decide whether or not I should pull my money out of my accounts. Um, so, um, I just heard like a dog scream or something. It was like a weird noise going from the neighbors. Maybe it was just the neighbor telling her dog to stop or something. Um, whew. So the quality of fidelity, right? Uh, and I haven't really, I've seen some return, but not as much as I would have liked to have seen. Um, and it's so up and down, right? <laughs> uh, so I just pictured the chart of of my investments and um, kind of reminds me of what her heartbeat should have looked at, look like if it were normal with all the ups and the downs and the big points, right? Okay. Um, so ask you to view your situation through the qualities of fidelity, loyalty, and faithfulness that are second nature to your pet. These attributes give your dog her sense of belonging and grounding in the world. They can do the same for you. Whoa. It's so weird because I said that right as I drew this. And I said the earth and to ground yourself. Right. And um, I love the earth for her because in grounding herself. Right. Like I said, is digging in dirt for her. And she loved digging in dirt. She loved digging in the sand. She loved going to the beach. Uh, she loved going outdoors and playing with her ball and digging or her big log. Cause she was a logger as well. You know, and your pets have so much unconditional love for you all the time. Their loyalty and their faithfulness with you, right? It's second nature. They don't even have to think about it. They just love you. And this is on heart, right? So this is karma saying how much love there is. So much love. And appreciation. And she is now in heaven. We have number seven, which is spirit. She is now with spirit. And in your heart. And I find it funny that it literally says her sense of belonging and grounding in the world. Because, you know, this could have been 
any sex of dog, um, but it specifically says her. Okay, and this is um, spirit. All right, spirit. What do we want to know about her spirit? Our spirit. What does karma want us to know about spirit? Oh my God, that's so beautiful. And look, I have all the moons out here. And we drew the moon card. And once again, we have the stars with the actual constellations on there. Oh my God, this is so crazy, but uh, so this castle here also looks like, so, woo, whoa. All right, jumping around, I'm excited. Um, looks like the Skullmania Lodge in Columbia Gorge, Skullmania, Washington, which is where my husband and I got married and we eloped once again um, with our dogs, right? And our photographer, it was just us the five of us and it, this looks like that area which was um another picture I was going to post in the background so I will probably put this on the end so you can see uh the place that we stayed because <laughs> it's, it's crazy and um during our wedding it, it was so cold it was 32 degrees and it was very windy, so we couldn't do a little bonfire like we wanted to do outside. Um, we did do a tarot reading outside, though, with the dogs and cut our cake. And um, I did want to get some pictures of us outside while the stars were out. And I was really hoping to get some pictures with all the stars in the background, but because the sky was cloudy. Um, you couldn't really see the stars and we did not get those pictures. Um, so this is spirit coming through and <laughs> giving me this picture right now. Um, and this dog here also is a black and white dog, kind of like a cattle dog. And my other dog, Scuba, Karma's husband is a black and white dog. And I feel like she is trying to communicate with him right now and um, tell him that she is with him. And she is with us because I have a lot of like wedding pictures, even the bushes here reminds me of the picture that I actually used, but it had a waterfall, but we had a bunch of yellow leaf trees in the background. So this is really crazy. I'm gonna have to pull all those pictures up. Um, wow. So let's read the moon. Okay, and what is that? That is, uh, Seven? Is that a seven? Three, four, five. Yeah, six. Yeah, so it is a seven. So again, we have a double seven, which is spirit. The moon. The moon is the card of joy and expansiveness. It speaks to your dog's deepest heart. Everyone needs something to howl at. The moon, like the kibble card, reminds us that once upon a time in generic history, gen genetic history, once upon a genetic history, dogs were wolves. That's easy to forget, especially in your dog. If your dog is a precious uh, Bichon Fries or a tiny teacup Maltese with a serious but darling underbite. 
<laughs> Karma didn't have a little, she didn't have an underbite, but she was missing um, two of her bottom teeth. So it kind of gave off like an underbite tone. Uh, but the truth is that long ago and far away, we were all wild. The moon asked, is my dog longing for a new experience of joy and wild abandonment? When you draw the moon, pose the question, are there new utility, mute, you, I hate when they do this to words and they separate it. Keep it on the same line, please. Uh, mutually satisfying, are there new mutually satisfying experiences, modern versions of howling I can share with my pooch? Yes, playing ball. Playing ball is definitely her way of howling. Um, she would actually howl at us to throw the ball. The answer may be something as simple as the cuddle on the previously forbidden couch. <laughs> yep, we did that a lot. Daddy was always yelling at us. Uh, a run through the woods. Yep, she did that a lot or a communal ice cream cone on a hot day. Uh, yeah, she's had some ice cream in Tahoe. Uh, she wouldn't like it out of the little cup that the guy gave us though. We had to put it in her bowl before she would eat it. Um, <laughs> whatever the answer, the moon asks you to let the sweet brightness of lunar light shine on you and your dog. <sighs> Sorry. Let's see. Oh, okay. Drawing this card can also indicate your dog lacked these joyous experiences earlier in life. Yeah, that's true. So I did get karma when she was a, about a year and three months old. Yeah, and she had a hole in her chest and holes on her paws and markings all over her. Um, as if she had gotten in a fight with another dog and I have the feeling that since she was a pit bull boxer mix, she was used as a bait dog and somehow got away without dying. Um, and she was really, really lucky to get away. Um, something terrible had happened to her in her first year and three months of her life. And, um, she was, so on Scuba's one year birthday, we took her into the shelter. We took him into the shelter to pick out a girlfriend and we did not ask to see Karma at all. She was so concentrated she was in her pen with um one of the attendants playing ball so she was so concentrated on that ball she didn't even look at us as we walked by the window um so we didn't really think much of it and we're like okay moving on uh we want to look at these lazy dogs over here and um the attendants there said no we got the perfect dog for you you guys are very active and adventurous and um we're gonna bring her out. Her name was Peaches and Cream that they named her there at the shelter um, when we first met her. And they brought her out into a little grassy caged in area so that Scuba and her could be introduced. And as soon as they she got through the gate, uh, Scuba and her just ran zoomies, <laughs> laps, just, you know, uh, infinity <laughs> symbol of running around in this yard, running around in circles, chasing each other. Um, they instantly fell in love. And um, she was a little bit of an aggressive dog. So I, I think uh, nobody else would take her. And I think that she was really forced upon our family um, because I asked to, to look at other dogs after that regardless of how how much they get along because scuba gets along with 
all dogs. And um, they flat out refused to let me see any of their dogs and said there's not going to be any more of a perfect match than Karma or Peaches and Cream at the time. And we did take her home. Uh, it took a good six months for her to get acclimated because she was pretty aggressive. I couldn't have them drink out of the same water bowl. They had to be fed in separate rooms. Uh, she didn't even know how to walk up the steps because we lived in an apartment that was two, three stories. And um, she did not know how to walk up the steps as soon as we came in. So Scuba ran up and down the stairs several times trying to show her, come on, let's go. Um, so that's how we ended up with Korma and we um, had her for 11 and a half years. And she was a joy. She was a hard child um, to deal with, but she was still my love and my joy, and she was super loyal. Um, so make up for that now. Remember the pack that howls together, prowls together. The message for humans who draw the moon is, it's never too late to kick up your paws, to contact the wonderful wildness in your own nature. Right, so this is telling me that um, you as a human need to have more fun, enjoy life more, get out, <laughs> enjoy the fruits of, of snacks, you know. Um, go explore, howl to the moon, get out in nature, look to the stars travel. Do it now before you regret it. And take your companion with you. Okay, um, we're going to do the same spread. We're going to do clarifying on each of these with the uh, Midnight Magic deck of mushrooms. <laughs> so like I said, Karma would eat mushrooms a lot. That's why her tag also has mushrooms on it. Uh, I see mushrooms, right? In the dirt, in the earth. She does have a moon here in her, uh, in her tag as well. Okay, Karma, uh, let's clarify for the head, the three of leashes. All right, uh, blackening wax caps, hydro -Cy -B. Kanika, Kan Kanika? And this is the Ten of Wands. Okay, Ten's about new beginnings. Endings and new beginnings. Okay, and this is your head, right? All right, we're gonna read the book for this one too. Um, Ten of Wands. Mm -hmm. Okay, refreshing rain clouds are on the way. A welcome sign. This is a card signifies burnout. Yeah, burnout in my head, right? Blackening and burnout of her life, right? She was burnt out. She just kept going. Go, 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 go. Blackening wax caps turn from brilliant orange to glossy black as they age. This signifies not their demise, but the strength gained from overcoming life's burdens. Delaying your reading for a short time if this card presents itself. 
delay your reading for a short time if this card presents itself. Okay. Um, so this is burden, overwhelmed, hard work. The weight of your responsibilities is heavy. Let the heat emanating from your objective fuel your determination. If you're feeling overwhelmed, know that you are so close to your achievement. Okay, and then the reversed or delegate inner resources, reach out. Delegate responsibilities if they are doling your brilliant shine. Don't try to prove anything by carrying it all. Wow. Really feel like this is in your head, right? In this, um, if this were upside down, but even though, you know, they, cards have both meanings, whether they're upside down or right side up, um, makes me think of reaching out to the vet, right? We have new beginnings here with the sunflower, um, and not just taking it all on on myself, right? Googling her symptoms and trying to figure out what is going on with her, knowing that her heartbeat is just, and I can't calm her down. Um, and not having to carry it all because you know, I was the one who had to make the decision to call it the end and hold her and be there with her. Tell her she's a good girl and that I love her and thank her for being a part of my family and picking us. And the burden is not my own. Skua is sad. My husband is sad. I'm sad. So many people that knew her and loved her and came in contact with her are sad. All the other dogs that came in contact with her I don't even know she's gone yet. Oh, man. Losing a pet is really hard. You spend so much time. Just a little over a decade with her. She's my baby. She's my child. Uh, it's so quiet here. Scuba is so quiet. She was obviously my, my noisy dog. Uh, always begging for food. Always wanting me to throw the ball. Very needy, <laughs> needing to be tucked in, waking me up four times a night, every night, to be tucked in um, after she got up and span around, or she needed to go potty. <sighs> Let's clarify the heart, the seven of bones. Page of wands. So the page is uh, about something, like somebody who is uh, like a teenager, somebody who is young, something that is maybe new, just in its beginning stage. I mean, wands, again, is very fast movement. It did happen really quick with her, um, you know, over a matter of like three hours. We have a three with her heart beating like that. I did hear her wake up and she kind of hit the wall as she woke up. It's like she was woken up suddenly with a jolt, like a nightmare almost, um, because she was having this heart complication. And then uh, she didn't say anything to me like she normally would. You know, she had wake me up like that. And I just heard her throwing up. 
And then of course I was trying to push her face towards uh, the LVP side and not the carpet. Uh, so it'd be easier to be cleaned up, not knowing that she was so sick um, and how bad she felt until I got up and cleaned it up and um, threw it away because the smell of it was so bad. I was about to throw up. Um, and then I just, I was petting her and loving her and asking her to calm down and I could feel her heartbeat. And I knew then that there was something wrong because that was just a crazy heartbeat. And she just lied there. She, she didn't want to get up to go to the car. Um, she did though. She didn't end up walking out to the car. Uh, she diarrhea as soon as she got outside like three times. Um, it was dark. It was three in the morning by this time. Uh, my husband stepped in one of the piles as we were trying to look at it and examine it. And I picked it up and put it in a bag to bring to the vet because usually they like a sample of their stool. It was very fast. Everything happened so fast. It feels like uh, it's not even real. Like I'm kind of like in a fog. I'm just going around in this weird fog. Like I'm still in this nightmare and I did have dreams about her before I woke up this morning and we were throwing, um, a really big, heavy, like weighted down horseshoe. I mean, horseshoes are already heavy, but it was like, it was filled with something. Um, we were throwing this horseshoe for them, scuba and karma to go chase it and get it and we were in this like canal of water which is interesting because I had a dream a long time ago before I met my husband of my grandmother and we were alongside a canal of water almost like in like Venice right and I was on this like toy ATV uh four by four driving up the steps um And so this canal was kind of the same, but this was more like a pool rather than like Venice. It's part of like um, the big body of water there. I don't even know if that's like a lake or an ocean there. Um, but this time, this morning, it was a, like a pool and it was almost, you know, swimmers have the lap pools and it's just a long straight pool. It was similar to that and it was almost... Now that I'm thinking about it, cross-shaped. It almost had like a little piece here, here, and then come down really long. And we're throwing this um, horseshoe in the water for Karma and Scuba to go get and retrieve. And they get all excited and, and run towards it to go get it. And then for some reason, there was always a person on the other side that we didn't know who would be there to retrieve that, which is weird that we would throw that anyway because it sinks it's heavy it it's sinking my dogs don't dive into the water to get things like some dogs do um but they do jump in the water uh, to swim and go get something like a ball that floats so it was just interesting and it just kept happening every time we would throw that horseshoe somebody else would be there to retrieve it and get it for us and we were kind of frustrated by it because we we're like oh we thanks but you know we threw that for the dog to get and you know the dogs are still excited they don't care and you know whatever we were friendly um so well that just like came out of nowhere but uh maybe a channel of water means something to you with your heart okay this is the pink Burn Cup, Rhodatarzetta Rosia, Page of Wands. And wands is about passion and fire and the things that you love, the things that drive you. Page of Wands. Okay, let's see. Page of Wands. The 
Page of Wands represents limitless potential, reunions, and good news. Oh, reunion. And this is your heart. Reunion in your heart. Good news in your heart. The pink burn cup simu similarly <laughs> represents renewal in precious bright pink gatherings emanating from burnt soil. Ooh. Interesting, because we um, are from paradise here and our whole property burnt, which if you know me, I talk about it. Um, and we just moved back. Uh, I think today is two months. So karma only got to be back home for um, almost two months here with no home. We just live in the fifth wheel. She never got to see the new house. Their appearance brings that with them the chance of a flush or desirable burnt morels. Interesting. And then it says flush here and we're having problems with our elevations because we have a shop and a house and we're going to have a deck that's going to be flush between the two on our burnt property. All right. So the upright creativity, potential, inspiration, an idea is conceptualized in your vigorously creative mindset, All right? Because <laughs> we're having to get creative and create these plans and do all these measurements to create something beautiful and uh, that we can live in. Okay, you are in a fertile environment full of seeds of inspiration and potential. So don't be afraid to go for it, right? So that's just telling me, like continue to do what you're doing. Um, you're in the right place. Okay, the reverse meaning is miscommunication, obstacles, hesitation, right? This feels like karma had a little heart attack, obstacles and hesitation of, do I bring her into the vet, right? Because I know it's going to be expensive. It's three o'clock in the morning. Um, but I could tell that something needed to happen. Um... You are hesitant to manifest your projects. If you are running into obstacles, yes, I'm running into obstacles, trying to get these level. Um, pg and &E pulled out our, our, um, <laughs> our survey marker when they put in our temp power meter and the water company pulled out our elevation marker when they came out to do the water for some reason. Um, so yeah, lots of obstacles here. Meditate on solutions and ask for a friend's help. We do need some friend's help to do this. Uh, we have to set the concrete. We're gonna have to do all the footings. We're gonna build the house ourselves. Beware that miscommunication may be, may delay progress, all right? Progress has already been delayed. It's been delayed for a really long time. Uh, we actually started this December of 2022 and we just got back on our property two months ago. Okay. And I see uh, eight plus nine is 17, which is an eight, which is the infinity. Um, which is manifestation, right? Bringing something to fruition. So whatever it is that you are working on, whatever projects that have obstacles, just meditate on the solution and ask for a friend's help. And beware of the miscommunication that delays the progress, right? You have to have really good communication when building something between all your contractors and making sure that things get done correctly correctly because there have been so many mistakes in every step of the way uh, of the paperwork and doing this and there's constantly delays um, and then there's hailstorms that randomly show up after a hundred degree weather <laughs> you know just happened that day 
All right, and then for spirit, we have justice. Old man of the woods. Interesting. Uh, Stro by Lomis. Flocomus. Flocopus. So it does look like an old man standing in the woods. Um, the one thing that stands out to me here is the circle. Right, it's almost like the full moon behind it, but that is actually the cap of the mushroom. But it does look like an old man standing here with the full moon. And we do have the moon here as the clarifier old man of the woods and karma loved the woods so much justice what is that 11 i think that's an 11 right x x i i believe it's an 11 um and we got married on 11 11 22 so that's alignment with the uh, messages coming through. All right, justice. Uh, let's see, I wanna make sure. Yeah. Okay. The old man of the woods, black and white and gray scales allow the mushroom to camouflage itself into the forest floor. When cut, however, the old man's flesh flushes a bright red, the color of passion and emotion. Oh, that just reminds me of like cutting open my heart and my bleeding heart, right? The justice card deals in black and white as well, but it's gray tones represent the balance between the opposing forces. The same balance that allows the old man mushroom to humbly thrive. Right, and so you have to have that balance of, you know, the spirit of she, she's gone and she's up there in heaven, but she's also here in my heart and there's that balance there. Upright, balance, cause and effect, fairness, truth. Make sure your actions are in line with your values. If you are cutting corners or being sneaky, those actions will come to light. If you have done something regretful, you'll be judged fairly as long as you take responsibility for your decisions. Oh, right. Like having to put her down is regretful, but um, I think that was the right choice. And I will be judged fairly um, for the responsibility of my decision. Be ready to experience life's truths, those that are clear and as well as murky, stay fair, right? It's so hard to make the decision of whether or not you should put your pet down. Somebody who you love and adore and cherish and want to be with you for the rest of your life and feel like they're going to be there for the rest of your life. Um, to make that decision is so hard. You know, there's so many murky answers to my questions of, you know, maybe I should have done a bunch of tests, but just the seeing her heart, the way it was just like this, almost flatlined all in one level made me feel like there was nothing that we could do. It was her time. But then at the same time, she was go, go, go and never slowed down. I felt like, well, maybe I just need to do some tests and we can figure this out and, uh, you know, just take care of her and, and she could still live. But um, her heart would not change. That pattern had been going on for, like I said, at least three hours. And it was not doing anything different. And the vet had never seen that before. So we would be doing test after test after test and just making her suffer more. And she was breathing really heavily as she was lying with me right before. 
and her heart was still racing and she just lied there. She had no life left in her, no energy. Uh, she still walked into the vet though. She still walked into her deathbed on her own, wagging her tail with a smile. In reversed unfairness, lack of accountability, dishonesty, and prejudice. Prejudice. We all mis make mistakes. If you find that you've made one, don't be too hard on yourself. You may feel some guilt as a result, but take accountability and be honest with yourself so you can learn and move forward to make better choices. All right, this is uh, it's about live and learn. <laughs> you know, this is life. We don't all know the answers. Only, you know, it's like we are, we all energy, we're all connected with each other and, and sharing each other's gifts and strengths we come up with the answers, right? You can't come up with it all on your own. You have to learn it at one point or another from somebody else. Um, you know, it's about live and let live, make mistakes and learn your lesson, but you have to learn your lesson, right? Or you're just gonna keep making the same mistakes. Yeah, I see a frog here. Could be significant. Um, a ladybug here. And these kind of like these little cups, right? So there's definitely some emotion there. We do have a moon. Looks like a full moon in the background here. Again, we have the moon. Looks like a full moon here. Um, it does look like, you know, kind of... Um, pushing up daisies like this is her buried even though we did have her cremated um, this is her connecting back with earth and she still sees us though she's watching over us with spirit you know and karma is about energies that come back to you if you do good good comes back to you if you do bad bad comes back to you right so and um my mom actually named her because we did save her from the shelter and i do think she was about to be euthanized and so she was pushed on us and so i think that was her good karma and you know good girl bad girl <laughs> you know um We really were blessed to have her in our lives and that she got to live and spend it with us. And she had a wonderful life. She was so spoiled and got to do all the things and got to travel halfway across the country, right? Traveling, getting out, enjoying new foods, new cuisines, you know, and uh, having the secret, right? Having the unknown with the full moon here, the things that are in the shadows that you don't see, that you don't see coming. Uh, so you just have to live your life to the fullest, get out, travel, enjoy the fruits of the earth, the mushrooms of the earth, the delicacies, right? Different types of mushrooms. You know, you're not really supposed to eat mushrooms because a lot of them are very deadly um, unless you actually know what you're doing and you have the knowledge, right? Learn from pet, uh, um, past mistakes of others who have eaten a mushroom that has killed them, right? You, We kind of learn and gather a history of what's good for us and what's not good for us. You know, and this is a delicacy. A lot of mushrooms are not sold in the grocery stores. Lately, I have been seeing some 
uh, more unique mushrooms than the stores, but usually it's just the, the white caps or uh, portobellos. Um, you know, just the basic ones. Um, so if you get like a different type of mushroom while you're out traveling, it really is about a delicacy and a chef usually makes it. There's a lot of love put into it. A lot of um, studying, right? You have to put together a recipe to create something. Right? And it's the same thing when you have your, your pets and your loved ones or your dog. Uh, you learn along the way. You don't know everything, right? And you get to build this like communication with them because you start to know about their personality specifically. So I always knew that when Karma would wake me up in the middle of the night, she wanted to be tucked in. You know, rare occasions she actually had to go to the bathroom because she didn't, you know, go right before we went to bed. But usually it was because she wanted to be tucked in. So when she would go stay at my mom's, her grandma's, I said, you make sure if she wakes you up that you tuck her in. Make sure she's tucked in because she can't sleep without that. You know, and she wanted to be right there in the same room with you. Sleeping right next to you. She used to sleep with me in my bed all the time. Um, until I got with my husband and then <laughs> it was the end of that. Uh, he is six, six, so it's hard enough to sleep with him in the bed. Um, so that was the message that um, Karma brought in for us today as a collective. And I know, you know, uh, my stories are really specific to me. Um, you know, having a pet really is like having a marriage, right? You're committed to it. You have to treat them well. You have to treat them. Take them out for walks. Let them enjoy the outdoors. Explore the earth. See the earth. Go see new places. Explore that with them. Share that experience with them. Which is like an um, out of this world kind of experience, right? Like if you eat mushrooms, if they're magical right? Having a pet, having her around was magical. And even when you get high off of doing mushrooms, sometimes you will have um, a bad trip, right? Sometimes I had some bad trips with karma. You know, she didn't, she loved every person in the world. Uh, didn't, like every dog, she only liked about 50% of the dogs and didn't really like other female dogs, right? There's always that competition with the females. Um, but there were the few that she did love and got along with and, um, you know, we hung out with them a lot so that she can have that socialization You know, and it was really hard traveling with her because she was a boxer pit mix. And, you know, she really had a boxer type face. She really did look like a pit too. She was 50 pounds, so she was medium sized. She wasn't huge. All she wanted to do was lick you from head to toe, lick your face, uh, give you big wet kisses. And, you know, um, there are a lot of rules out there when traveling and you're trying to get a, a campsite with your RV and you're cross, you know, you're traveling half the country. A lot of places will not allow aggressive breeds, which the boxer and the pit bull are on that list into their facilities. Uh, didn't matter if they met her or not because she was always kissing them, you know, as we drove up. So she definitely was a challenge and I couldn't take her everywhere with me, but, um, you know, there were times, too, where we'd take her to Fort Funston in the Bay Area. And it's an old uh, military base. And it's a huge off-leash dog beach. I think it's like 
eight miles long or something like that. Five to eight miles long. And there's just a bunch of dogs running around off leash with their owners and walking around up and down the, the cliffs, down to the beach and playing ball and having a great time. And she was able to do that when we first got her, even knowing she was super aggressive when we first got her. Um, you know, she got socialized and we didn't really have any problems. Uh, you know, there's always that one little thing, you know, you get too close, don't, sn don't smell my butt, uh, don't smell my coochie. Uh, I, that's my private parts, please, you know, stay away from me. And she's setting her boundaries, but it would cause issues. And her bark was more than her bite. She usually just talked a lot of shit, but she didn't really ever do anything. She was the one who got beat up after talking shit. So, um, yeah, we had a lot of great adventures, camping and traveling and she got to uh, explore a lot of this world. So, um, you know, I'm satisfied that she had a happy whole life and that she didn't get euthanized when she was just a year and three months. Um, and she got to spend 11 and a half years with us as a 12 and a half year old dog. Still kicking, still going, still going strong. Nothing ever standing in her way. Nothing would ever hold her back. Okay. Well, that's the message for you today. Um, as a collective coming through from karma to let us know how happy she was and all the lessons that we learned and that she learned by having us as a family. Okay. Thank you for being with me. Please like, share, subscribe, help out my channel. And um, I wish you all the best out there and just love each other because you never know. Things happen very quickly and it's unseen. Okay. And I set my grandmother's watch here, who is taking care of karma now up in heaven, to 5.54 a.m., which is her time of death, on 5.15.24. Love you guys. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for being here for karma and letting me express my love and appreciation for her here with you. Okay, I hope that you got something from this message. Thank you.
All this harassment. All because of this. Because of that. What do you want? Crazy dogs. Scuba gets in the way. Ready? Mm -hmm. Let go. Yes. You're the best flower girl ever, huh? Yes. Scuba, you near it? Scuba. Stay, hey, hey.
Are you cold? Get out of the water. <laughs> I want to thank you and our angels for being present for the messages that have come through in this reading. If you found this to be helpful, please like and share this content so others can benefit as well. Seek the subscribe button and don't forget to get notifications so you never miss a reading. The more love you share, the more love you receive. And you can find more love right here in these other videos. For more information about this channel, personal readings, swag, and donations, check the links in the description box.